Greetings and thank you for visiting the podcast today. You're tuned in to the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. So today I want to share with you something very important that's, that went on just recently, about maybe a week ago. Um, it does not have to do with Robert Sylvester Kelly. We're still waiting for his sentencing process. And in between that, we're looking at historical issues, present day issues, and, you know, things that could, you know, we have to face in society. So, um, I don't know if anyone has heard about the story of the nine-year-old girl who got the candy from a, a schoolmate. And it was laced with marijuana. Okay. Um, we're going to listen to the interview of the nine year old girl's mother on the Factor Uncensored on Fox TV. So let's listen to this interview and let's have a discussion. These are inner city situations that we have to deal with on a regular basis so that we can make our young students and young children more aware of what is going on in the world so they won't be so vulnerable to go down the route of what the mother states, the principal stated, was an expulsion. She's going to be expelled for taking this candy. So let's just listen. Here we go. Now on The Factor, a nine-year-old student at Cron Elementary School in spring suspended after eating that marijuana gummy last week. Mom tells me her child had to be pick, pick up, picked up from school on Thursday because of how sick she was. The school called me and they said that you need to get to the school immediately because Amaya threw up. You need to come and pick her up. So I picked her up. We came home and I did what, you know, of course, any mother would do. I just tried to nurse her back to health. I tried, I gave her as much as I could of Pedialyte, Tylenol, um, crackers, because I thought it was a 24 hour virus. At that point, you had been told nothing about the school, by the school, about what may have uh, occurred or transpired. Not at all. No, they only told me that she threw up in class and it was a lot of it. <laughs> That was the only information that I received. But um, yeah, when, when I got her, she came home and, you know, she was asleep for at least four hours. She just was in a deep sleep, which was unlike her, even with the virus, to go to sleep and be in such a deep sleep for so long. Mm -hmm. So much so that I had to wake her up. And when I, you know, we, I nursed her back to health, sort of. Um, so Friday comes around and she wakes up and she's still not feeling well. She's like, ah, I don't want to go to school. I don't feel well. But school is important to me. You know, we have tests coming up. So I said, well, you're not throwing up. Can we just see if you can make it through the day? She says, yes, mama, we, we can try. So the day goes by. Nothing, no phone call from the school. Not even from the nurse. Um, so I assume her day went well. She come home. She looks normal. I said, how was your day? And she said, it was it was okay. Um, it wasn't until 5 o'clock, 5.30 Friday when I received the phone call from the principal. 5 o'clock on a Friday evening was very weird to me. So I answered it, and she immediately says, I'm calling to talk to you about Amaya's symptoms from Thursday. She went home, and she went home. Um, and threw up at school, right? I said, yes, ma'am. And I proceeded to give her the symptoms of wh what she had. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, I have officer so-and-so here. He's with me. And the reason that we're calling you is because Amaya took some or ate some THC edible candy. Oh, I didn't know this. This was all new to me. And apparently it was new to them because they had no idea as well. And she was just calling to verify her symptoms because she wanted to make sure that she actually ate it. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, that, those were her symptoms. She said, well, it does sound like she ate it. So what I'm calling for is to um, let you know that 
since she did eat that on campus. Now, these were her words at the time. She said that we are going to have to expel her for she'll have a three day expulsion with DEAP schooling afterwards. At the time, we didn't know how long the DEAP, she said it, it, that will be determined later. And okay, I, but let's stop right there. Your daughter gets candy laced with THC from some other child at the school. Right. But then the school principal calls you to tell you your child will be expelled. So what if this happened to you? This personally happened to me as an adult, a grown adult with a neighbor, um, laced a drink that caused me to black out, that caused me to almost die, that many people would never come back from because of what was in it. Um, a nine-year-old girl, imagine the purity, the virginity of her body being consumed by this illegal or this substance, not illegal substance, marijuana is legal in, in most states, but having to ingest it, not knowing what her body could have, you know, went through, and now she's about to get expelled. What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel that that's unreasonable? Another failing system for someone in our, our community of education, not successfully helping a student when she's in need, when she's in need of support, because she now has to deal with whatever her body's gonna do because of this ingestion. Let's listen, let's, let's take, listen some more. Absolutely. Now, how does that make sense? I, I, wa I was trying to make it make sense uh, when I was on the phone with her and the officer, and I, I couldn't make it make sense for myself. Um, yeah, so even sitting there as we were discussing she was just telling me her disciplinary action that she needed to take for Amaya. She said, I have to do this. I have to do a disciplinary action. I say, why? Uh, my question was, why? Why do you have to? And she said, because she ate the candy. And per code of conduct, if you eat it, you have to have a consequence or, you know, some sort of disciplinary action. I said, well, and, and Angela, we would assume your daughter didn't know that, you know, and what would a nine year old know about THC and drugs that she's eating candy laced with drugs? Absolutely. Well, that that's where I went first. I was like, oh, you know, but I gave the school the benefit of the doubt. And I said, well, let me talk to Amaya. Let, let me get her account of what happened. Because I can say that she, you know, she didn't know, but I need to hear her and see her and talk with her and see, you know, her reaction, her response and how this happened. And that's when I knew she had no idea what she was eating, when she ate it. It was given to her by a friend and it could have been given to another student, but Amaya was the one that ended up with it. Mm -hmm. And she did uh, she did eat it in the bathroom out there and i'm gonna tell you this she ate it in there because her teacher doesn't allow candy in outside candy or inside candy in the classroom she was honest enough to say mom i just i i wanted that piece of candy right then and i i went in the bathroom and i ate it i didn't know anything else about whatever is was on it it was a piece of sour candy rope now you also wanted to verify that your daughter had drugs in her system so you took her to a minor emergency room and you had a toxicology test or a drug test done and what were the re what were the results we went friday after the phone call with the principal because that was that was at this point the best thing to do after i contact cps uh, we went to the urgent care urgent care did a urinalysis on her 
it came back within a, they walked back in within a minute. She's positive. And, you know, I have the paperwork. She's positive for marijuana. And it was a few, it was a list of things, but marijuana was the only one that she was positive for. And how does that leave you feeling as a mother knowing somehow your child got marijuana in a system at nine years old? At nine, I, I have a mix of emotions. I went, I'm, I'm upset mainly by the way that the school is treating this. I am fearful of what this could do to her in the future. Like, yeah, we're adults, you know, adult, you can kind of, your body is, you know, done developing or whatever the case is. Her reaction from that, you know, who knows what the future holds as far as her health wise. Um, it's just a mix of emotions. I, I mean, some people say she knows and it's just so much going on and so much. I have just a mix of emotions. But right now, the main one is anger. The way the school district or the school has treated your daughter now, they went from expulsion to now suspension for a day. Absolutely. Um, we I went to the school today to speak with the principal because, like I said, I never had a meeting with her. She's She didn't even request a meeting. I gave her until 10 a.m. today to call me just to come in so I could speak with her personally about the situation she never called. So I just went to the school and I spoke with her and I said, well, the first thing I want to ask is, is she expelled or is she suspended? Because I know the difference as well as everyone else, but I can only go by what she said. And she said, expelled over the phone but when i got there today she said i didn't say that i said suspended for three days with dap initially and then i changed it to one day suspension okay i won't go back and forth i didn't go back and forth you want to change it that's fine as long as she's not expelled i'm okay but that's what the initial thing she said what it, the consequence was going to be so how's your daughter doing now? She's much better. Like she, she's very active. Um, is what I can say. She's kind of bouncing around. She, you know, she's more than normal. Mm -hmm. Um, she was complaining of stomach aches, but we kind of got past that. She's been eating better. Um, she's doing better than. Thursday. Thursday, she had me very, very scared because I did not know what was wrong with her. So who's accountable? The girl she took the candy from? The nine-year-old who took the candy and ate it? The school for being the meeting place that created the situation? The teacher for not seeing that the candy was exchanged? the school for not having a camera? I mean, how would you validate who's wrong for this? The girl gets the one day suspension, almost an expulsion. And there's so much more to this story. What are your views? We are talking to the mother of a nine-year-old student at Cron Elementary School in Spring, who at one point was expelled after eating a marijuana-laced gummy bear. Now, her mom says she didn't know it was tainted and says the way the school handled the entire situation is totally unprofessional. That's the thing that we're at right now, because even when I went there today, there was no remorse, none. Uh, the principal was basically like, I still don't know if she knew that it was laced with THC or not. You know, there, there's no remorse. There was still a consequence of her suspension. And I even questioned that. I said, well, what is she suspended for at this point? I have a question. Is the school system a lot like the criminal justice system in regards to Robert Sylvester Kelly, you know, with all of the discriminatory acts that they're doing upon his case to where they're not taking discrimination into um, into the matter. They're not taking into account his his um, 
disability. They're not taking into account any of the entire scope of the situation. And I understand that criminal justice is not there to be emotional, but they should take into consideration what type of factors when they're putting a sentence upon someone. What are some of the major factors that you believe should be considered when putting, when sentencing someone? Okay, here we go. She said, because she ate the candy and our policy states that she should not eat from other children or they shouldn't combine food from, you know, up to outside of the school. And I said, okay. So the consequence for that and the appropriate level of, I guess, discipline would be a suspension. And she said, yes, yes, for Amaya, yes. I said, oh, why, why for her? She said, well, we needed to investigate this anyway. So I feel like suspension would be better uh, while we are investigating. I said, okay, well, so it's not necessarily because she ate the candy from another student. She said, no, it is. I said, well, okay, one point, and I just wanted to make this to her. I said, in February 14th of this year, 2022, I was um, asked by the teacher or told that we could bring Valentine's Day cards with treats attached. And um, they were going to have a party and they were going to pass them out in class. Well, okay, I spent about $25 on treats. I did not have to take them to the office first. Amaya took them to school and passed them out among her friends. And when she came home, she had a bag full of treats from 20 other children. So it's okay to do that. But now mine is being punished for eating a piece of THC candy that her friend gave her today or Thursday. That I just she did not know about that. She did not. Um, I use the word unknowingly because that is in the code of conduct. My daughter unknowingly, let's put that in there because it, you know, the, everyone wants to say she knew no unknowingly ate a piece of candy laced with THC. So yeah, I, I, I am highly, highly upset. Well, and we are reaching out to the school district to get an answer and a response. And of course, we want to wish you and your daughter the best, Angela. Thank you so thank much for you. joining us here on The Factor. So that's what I want to bring up because this whole concept of the community, who's held accountable, who's responsible for our children when we allow them to go to school for a better education when classmates are turning uh, around and bringing weapons into a school and hurting themselves in a cafeteria where children are that has to witness this, the, the, the toxicity of the community at large, be it in the suburban or urban areas are very vital. It's something that should be considered. And how do we, as members of society help to alleviate these chaotic situations. I just wanted to bring this up for some clarity, some thoughts. I want to get your opinion on it, as, especially as parents with children in school. These are things that need to come in because if you remember in Solar Coaster, when Robert Sylvester Kelly was only eight, he saw his first murder. This girl, his girlfriend, Lulu, she got hit in the head by a kid with no supervision around them. And the next thing you know, his best friend was gone. So that was a traumatic experience. So this little girl, this nine-year-old little girl, as well as the other little girl that gave her the gummy, I mean, I don't know. It seems to me like was the, did the girl go and get the... Uh, gummy from a medicine cabinet or on her mother's couch or on the floor next to the couch where she slept. Where did these gummies come in to the hand of the individual that gave it away? And why would the child give it away instead of eating it herself? I mean, or himself. 
I don't know how this came about and we can have a million and one different, you know, scenarios to it, but it's just the fact of being responsible and accountable is the parent of the other child that gave the candy away. Is she the accountable one? So I just wanted to bring this to the light and share some ideas because I know that the healing starts at a very young age. And if we talk about this in our community, we'll be a lot easier to talk about things because our minds are open to even marijuana, candy, and a nine-year-old getting expelled. Something as simple and as light as that. Um, so I thank you for listening to the podcast and, you know, giving me your points of view and your opinion. And also we still have the cash app upload, uh, giveaway that's going to be May 29th. So feel free to, um, look at the description box for the rules and regulations on that. I thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.